we want to graph f of x is equal to x minus 1 squared minus 2. This is a parabola. I see this because of this x that will be squared. It is a quadratic equation. Since it is in this form, I can easily see the vertex with very little work. The vertex is positive 1, negative 2. Once again, I know this is the vertex for my formula f of x is equal to a times x minus h squared plus k. The vertex is hk. I do need to be careful because you notice in the formula is x minus and then the h. So that is why a lot of times people get confused with the h that's inside the parentheses. It may be opposite of what you think it should be. And I will be able to look at the a, the coefficient in front, and if it's positive, my parabola will open up. If it's negative, it will open down. My a in this problem is a positive 1, so it does open up. Now we need to find the x-intercept and the y-intercept. Well, you will just select the other one equals 0. Now remember f of x, that is just a fancy way to say y. So y is going to equal x minus 1 squared minus 2. To find the x-intercept, I need to let y equal 0. So I will plug in 0 for y, and I will do a little bit of work here. The easiest way to solve this is to use a square root property. So I do have x minus 1 squared. I want to get that by itself. I will add 2 to both sides. If you don't mind, I like my x on the left, so I will switch sides. Not a big deal. So I will take the square root, but if you take the square root of the left side, you have to take the square root of the right side. The square root of something squared is just whatever is underneath your radical. It will be x minus 1. Don't forget, when you take the square root of both sides, it will be plus or minus. And the square root of 2 is not a nice number, so we will just leave it as a square root of 2. I will add 1 to both sides, and my x-intercept will be 1 plus or minus radical 2. Since I am going to graph this, I am going to change this to a decimal with a little help from my calculator. 1 plus radical 2 would be 2.41 if I rounded it. Remember, this is the x-intercept. And that is when y is 0. And 1 minus radical 2, with a little help from my calculator, I'll get negative, And it will be 0 0.41. Once again, I got this x-intercept by letting y equal 0. We have found our x-intercepts. Okay, now let's find our y-intercept. Once again, I'm plugging it into my equation. In order to find the y-intercept, you will let x equal 0. So this will be y is equal to 0 minus 1 squared minus 2 in the parentheses. I simply have a negative 1 squared minus 2. And a negative 1 squared is a positive 1. So my y-intercept is negative 1. So when my x is 0, my y-intercept, negative 1. OK, so we're ready to graph it. Our vertex, 1, negative 2. I know it opens up our x-intercepts about 2 and a half and about a negative a half. So 2.4 is a little bit past the 2. And negative 0.4 is about right there. I know the y-intercept is at 0, negative 1. So yes, that is looking good. Just for the fun of it, if I wanted to plug in 2, I'm guessing my point would be right down here at negative 1 also. And if you plugged in 2 for x, so you get 2 minus 1. That'd be 1 squared minus 2 it would be. So I am now ready to draw my parabola. Okay, now for the domain and the range. For the domain, my parabola goes on and on and on to the left and to the right. So my domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. Now for my range, 
I do not have any y's including in this graph way down here when the y's are negative 5 or any y's at negative 4 or negative 3. My range does not start until right here at negative 2. And then as I go towards infinity, I have y's included in my graph. So my range will start at negative 2. It does include negative 2, which is why I'm putting a bracket. So it will go from negative 2 to infinity. Okay, now I want to graph f of x is equal to 1 minus x minus 3 squared. Once again, I do know that this is a parabola because of the x squared. It is quadratic. I'm going to rewrite this as f of x equals negative x minus 3 squared plus 1. I just wanted to rearrange that so it would look a little bit more like our formula for a parabola. My vertex is 3, 1. This parabola opens down because I have a negative in front here for my a. To find the x-intercept, I have to use a little algebra. Remember, f of x is the same as y, so I have y is equal to that. In order to find my x-intercept, I will let y equal 0. I am going to add x minus 3 squared to both sides. And now I'm going to use the square root property. So I will have x minus 3 equals plus or minus 1. The square root of 1 is simply 1. Add 3 to both sides. Remember, the 3 is not plus or minus. It's the plus or minus 1. So when I add 3 over here, I will get a positive 3 plus or minus 1. 3 plus 1 is 4. 3 minus 1 is 2. Those are my x-intercepts. Now I'm going to look for my y-intercept. In order to find the y-intercept, I will let x equal 0. 0 minus 3, I will have negative 3 in that parentheses. Be careful here. Do not make a careless error. I cannot change this to a positive yet. Do your exponents first. Negative 3 squared is 9, a positive 9. And I will have negative 9 plus 1, which is a negative 8. So my y-intercept is going to be 0, negative 8. So we know that the vertex is at the point 3, 1. I know it opens down and have an x-intercept at 4, 0 and at 2, 0. I have a y-intercept at 0, negative 8 which will be going off my graph here a bit. And it does look like I have a parabola. Let's draw that parabola and our domain. It looks like this parabola is going to go on and on and on and on in both directions. It looks like the domain is going to be negative infinity to positive infinity. The range. The range. Notice if I'm coming from negative infinity, the range goes from the bottom to the top. My graph is down here in all these negative y's, these negative range, until 1. As the y's get larger, 2, 3, 4, my graph is not part of the picture. So my range will be negative infinity, and it goes up until when the y is 1. I will draw a bracket because it does include 1. And that is the maximum value of our graph. Okay, our last parabola that we are going to graph. We have f of x is equal to x squared plus 4x plus 3. Now this is not in the form we have been working with. If I want it in this form, I need to complete the square first. Why do I want to complete the square? Because I want to have this binomial squared. And how do you get a binomial squared? You get it from having a perfect trinomial. So, we have to make that perfect trinomial. We have to complete the square. I will have y is equal to x squared plus 4x plus 3. I want my x squared and my x over here by themselves. So, I will subtract 3, but whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. I will have y minus 3 equals x squared 
plus 4x. Now to complete the square, you should already know how to do this, but I'm having to add a special number that will make this a perfect trinomial. How do we do that? We take the x term, the 4, whatever's with the x, divide it by 2, and then you square it. So I take the 4, divide it by 2, square it, that'd be 2 squared, which is 4. So I'm going to add 4. But if you add 4 to one side, you have to add 4 to the other. I have y plus 1 is equal to an x squared plus 4x plus 4. If I factor that, it'd be x plus 2 times x plus 2, which is x plus 2 squared. Now let's solve for y. Subtract 1 from both sides. y is equal to x plus 2 squared minus 1. And now you can look at it and tell me that your vertex is negative 2, negative 1. It does open up my x-intercept. Remember, I will let y equal 0. I'm going to add 1 to both sides. I'm going to rewrite it to make this a little clearer for you. I will take the square root of both sides. So I will have x plus 2 equals plus or minus 1. Solving for x, we are going to subtract 2 from both sides. I will have x is equal to, I'll write the negative 2 first. So be negative 2, then the 1 is a plus or minus. So negative 2 plus 1, one of my intercepts will be negative 1, 0. And negative 2 minus 1, the other intercept would be negative 3, 0. Okay, now let's look for the y-intercept. In order to find the y-intercept, I will let x equal 0. So I will have 2 squared minus 1. That will be 4 minus 1, which is 3. So the y-intercept will be 0, 3. Whew, now let's graph. Okay, so our vertex is negative 2, negative 1. I know my parabola opens up. It has an x-intercept at negative 1, 0 and at negative 3, 0. The y-intercept is at 3 and we can draw our parabola. Okay, in our domain and range, the domain is negative infinity to positive infinity because all of my x's would be included on this graph. My range, I do not have any y's that are part of the picture down here. My y's don't start until my y is at negative 1 and then it does go to infinity. So my range starts at negative 1. It does include negative 1 and it goes to positive infinity. Now I want to show you one more thing about this parabola. We had to complete the square in order to find the vertex, but we could have found the x-intercepts and the y-intercepts pretty easily without changing the form. I have y is equal to, and I could factor this into x plus 3 times x plus 1. That is x squared plus 4x plus 3. And if y is equal to 0, then we can use the zero product property. And you should notice x plus 3 will equal 0, which means x is equal to negative 3. Or x plus 1 is equal to 0, which means x is equal to negative 1. That is the same x-intercept as we got when even when our equation was in the other form. We could have also easily found our y-intercept by plugging in 0 wherever we saw x. And you will see that our y-intercept is 3. 
So the only thing that we could not get easily was the vertex. But we have a special formula for vertex if our parabola is in this form. You will let x equal negative b over 2a, which would be negative b in this case is 4 over 2 times and a in this equation is 1. So that would be negative 4 over 2, which is negative 2. And I will take that x, x equals negative 2. I will plug that into my equation wherever I see x. So I will have negative 2 squared plus 4 times negative 2 plus 3. 4 minus 8, I will get negative 4 plus 3, which is negative 1. When I plugged in negative 2 for x, my y was negative 1. And that's the same vertex that we got when our parabola was in the other form. So this is one more way to graph a parabola.